Hello, and now I want to look at the two main versions of IP address currently in operation, which fall under IP version 4 and IP version 6. Remember that IP is this protocol, the internet protocol, and an IP address is just part of that protocol. So two versions of this. First of which is, well the first one we're going to look at is IP version 4. IP versions 1 to 3 were kind of very early on and kind of research based. IP version 4 was the first widespread one. Uh, that the internet used. So this is the, the IP address defined by IP version 4 is a 32 bit number. So 32 binary digits is what makes up the IP address. We can divide this further into two parts, a prefix and a suffix. The prefix part is called the network identifier and the suffix part is called the host identifier. So it, we'll talk about in a video on subnetting how this is actually divided up and it could be static, it could change based on a subnet mask. But a network identifier needs to tell us, so let's take a step back. So we, we've talked about how an IP address is, is there to identify a connection between a network and a device. So we need to know what the network is and what the device is. So we need to look at where the device is, so in, which, in what network is the device. So that's what the network identifier part does. And also within that network, which device is it? So what is the actual host that we're looking at? Um, we'll come back to this concept when we talk about subnetting, but for the time being, let's just mention how we often express IP addresses, or IP version 4 addresses, I should say. Well, we write them in dotted decimal notation in most cases because it's more readable for us. A long 32 bit binary number isn't very fun to deal with unless we absolutely have to. So, what we're doing here is fairly self explanatory because we've got four decimal numbers separated out by dots and we are converting each byte in the 32 bits of which we have 4, 4 times 8 is 32 so we convert each byte to the decimal equivalent stick a dot in space of a space and then we end up with this and because each decimal number is corresponding to one of these four bytes each decimal number is going to be between 0 and 255 hopefully you know that we can't get above this in a byte because if you see here we've got all ones and this is 255 in binary, we're not going to get any more out of it for all ones. So if you ever see an IP address with a value higher than 255, someone's made a mistake. So that, this is how we often express it because it's slightly easier for us than just dealing with binary all the time. Okay, that is IP version 4. Let's now look at IP version 6. IP version 5, as far as I know, did exist. I don't think it was actually called IP version 5. It was more of like a research project as far as I know and they just skipped the number because they didn't want them to be confused. But nothing came of it, so we're left with just IP version 4 and IP version 6. We don't really know much about the other versions. But the key difference between these two versions is that as opposed to a 32-bit, now we have a 128-bit number, so it's a lot bigger in terms of the actual address. It does still have the overall concepts, though it is the same protocol after all. It's not going to massively change despite being a, a different version. So it still has part of this address allocated to being the network identifier and part of it being allocated to the host identifier. So we need to look at both the network and then within the network to identify a single device within it. There are some differences though because this was an opportunity for researchers to do some stuff, not just increase the size. So unlike an IP version 4, the suffix part can actually be derived from the MAC address, which is interesting because normally they would be separate. We've talked about how the MAC address is linked to the network adapter. So this is the physical address and the IP address is the logical address. But there is some connection in IP version 6, but we don't need to address it, ironically, uh, yet. In terms of how we actually represent an IP version 6 address, the problem has got four times worse because 128 is four times 32. So we can't really use dotted decimal notation now because it's too long, it's a bit uncomfortable. Before it was only four decimal digits, now we've got 16, so it's quite long. So we want to try and compress it further and we do this by using a different notation called colon hex notation. They're both quite self-explanatory because here we separate out with a colon as opposed to a dot and we use hexadecimal digits instead of decimal or binary. This is an actual example of an IP version 6 address written in colon hex notation. So we have eight groups of 16 bits, which we can represent with four hexadecimal digits because each represents four bits. So four times four is 16. That's why we have to have four in each group 
The exception to this is where we have a leading zero or multiple leading zeros. So like in decimal, if we had 0, 5, 1, well that's just 51. We don't need to write in the leading zero because there are infinitely many. So here we've got 0, 4, 4, C. We can get rid of a zero just to make it a little bit shorter. Same here, we've got four zeros in this grouping. We can get rid of three of them and just leave this one as a placeholder, or we could even get rid of this one and just have the colons back to back. We need to, the computer will interpret this and add the zeros, but in terms of us writing it down, it saves a bit of space. We obviously can't get rid of the zeros that are in between other numbers because these are significant. Like a thousand in decimal, we can't just get rid of one of the middle zeros because it changes the whole number. So we've got to be quite careful, but we can compress it because we often end up with leading zeros in addresses. Okay, so hopefully you're clear on the difference between IP version 4 and IP version 6. I'm yet to explain why we have two versions, so let's do that now by saying that IP version 4 only provides 4.3 billion unique addresses. So IP addresses are meant to be unique on the network they're running, and because the internet is worldwide, 4.3 billion isn't really enough because what we have, 9 billion people on Earth, and this number is rising. 4.3 billion is not enough when we have each of us in the developed world have usually more than one device. So we need more than one IP address. 4.3 billion just isn't enough. And the equation is 2 to the 32 because we have 32 bits and it's in binary. So these are the number of combinations we get. The fact that this is an issue was actually realized in the late 80s, which I think is impressive because the internet wasn't nearly as prevalent as it is now, the World Wide Web wasn't developed by that point. So they realised that this just wasn't going to be enough combinations to be sustainable. Eventually the pool of unallocated IP addresses would be exhausted, i.e. would run out of IP addresses. To stem the flow, to try and reduce the depletion rate, they invented technologies such as NAT and CEDA, which did a really good job of actually, uh, we would have run out way way earlier without these two technologies and a couple of others as well. These are the two we're going to be talking about in future videos so we'll come back to those but they needed time to be able to develop the next standard and so they had these sort of in the meantime. So IP version 6 was introduced in 1998 like formally it was introduced so they worked on it throughout the 90s. NAT and CEDA were both early 90s so that's sort of the speed of things, the speed that new technologies were invented and this is a graph showing the daily assignment rate of IP version 4 addresses over time split up into the five regional internet registries which you've talked about. So you can see here that over time they grow quite a lot, so every day they grow every year pretty much more IP addresses were being given out. And when we add these together we end up being uh, nearing our 4.3 billion mark. So actually in 2011 APNIC, which is in red, was the first to fully deplete its allocation, which is very unsurprising because APNIC is Asia Pacific, which includes countries like India and China. So India and China were the two biggest growers, and so they needed more and more IP addresses, and so APNIC ran out first. And you can see it only drops off here because they had to end up using IP version 6. IP version 6 was used, was deployed in 2006, so eight years after it was first introduced and it took a while for people to start using it, but eventually they had to because of this, this drop-off because they ran out, so it got, it, finally it got exhausted. Going back to IP version 6, because we now have 128 bits as opposed to 32, and due to just the nature of exponential growth, as the exponent goes up by one here, we're doubling each time because the base is two, so we end up with a massive number, 340 trillion 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 unique addresses, which is a number none of us can <laughs> process, it's just so big. Maybe an astrophysicist is used to dealing with numbers of this scale. But this is w more than enough IP addresses for the foreseeable future. Each of us could be given a trillion IP addresses each and it would still not run out of space. So IP version 6 gives us enough room to expand by more than enough. So it shouldn't exhaustion shouldn't become an issue of IP version 6. I would be very surprised if it happens in our lifetime, if at all, because, yeah, it's just a massive number. I think it's important to emphasize that IP version 4 and IP version 6 are still used, so it's very difficult to phase out something like IP version 4, especially because they're actually not compatible with two standards because of some technical differences. It's not just about one being longer than the other. 
there are technical differences between the two standards which we haven't gone into so that adds another degree of complication in an already <laughs> complicated picture the fact that there needs to be some conversion there needs to be your, your device needs to work with both standards and they're both a little bit different so it's going to take time for IP version 6 to surpass IP version 4 but clearly it needs to ha happen because we reached our limit in 2011 and <laughs> we can't run out of space we need to we need to transition to IP version 6